wanted to be on the debating team, but I never have any time to try out for it. You know how many projects they would have going for me. So this afternoon, when I heard they were forming a new team, I said to myself, Patty, you go in there and show them how it's done. So I went in there. And what was I? I was sensational. I really had them tied up in knots. Well, I'm sure you ought to talk to everyone, Patty. Why shouldn't she? She's got the biggest mouth. Sometimes I'd like to debate whether or not he's human. <laughs> Patty, did they tell you whether you're going to be on the debating team? No. But why would they pass up their golden opportunity? Hello, everybody. Hello, darling. Hi, Papa. Hi, Dad. You're home early. I know. I just couldn't stand it another minute down there at the office. Hard day? Well, it wasn't that it was so hard. It was just so noisy. That office is a madhouse. Phones ringing all the time, people talking a blue streak. That's the newspaper game for you. Hello, Richard. Boy, did I have a wild day today. You know that math teacher that everybody says is an ogre? Well, I've got a meaning out of the palm of my hand. I was torn between bluffing it through or throwing myself at his mercy, so I stayed after class and I said to him, look, Mr. It's for you. Hi, Tommy. No, I don't know who that was. I've never seen her before. How's things? Hey, you heard what happened in math class today. Would you like to hear what happened in history? Not particularly, Patty. Oh. Well, uh, you know. A funny thing happened in gym, though. I went to pick up this medicine ball and the... Darling, your father's tired. Oh, I understand. You should. Hey, did you hear the joke about the marathon walker who got tired before he got to the finish line? It was like this. Patty, don't you ever stop talking? I guess I just have a lot of interesting things to say, that's all. Oh, yeah? Okay. I'll talk to you later, Tom. Bye. I don't have to talk, you know. I just do it to be sociable. I think Patty's just excited about the debating team. Don't defend her. She couldn't keep quiet if her life depended on it. Oh, couldn't I? I'll bet you I could keep my mouth shut for three days if I wanted to. That's a bet. What do you mean? I mean that if for the next 72 hours you can go without saying one word, I will give you an extra week's allowance. In fact, I'll give you two extra weeks' allowance. Are you serious? Dead serious. It's a deal. When do we start? Right now. <laughs> Hi, folks. Patty, have I got great news for you. They just made you captain of the debating team. <laughs> A minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet! Still they're cousins, identical cousins, and you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins. Hey, do you remember I told you I'd let you know when the Glee Club practice began? It's tonight. <laughs> Why don't I pick you up at 8 o'clock? 8.30? Has something the matter with your throat? Something wrong with your head? Well, I hope you feel better. See you later. I wish he'd stop hanging around you. Doesn't he know you're my girl? Well, if he doesn't, why don't you tell him? Yeah, I know. But you could talk yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. You know what I think? I think you're fickle. Uh-uh. As a matter of fact, I think you're the most fickle girl I've ever gone with. And I have gone with hundreds. This little bet of yours is a good idea. It gives me a chance to get some things off my chest. You're a very spoiled girl, Patty. And ungrateful. I mean, if you have me... Why would you want to look at anybody else? Yes, sir, this is a whole new side of you. I mean, we can really communicate. Well, I have to be running along. 
I really enjoyed our little chat. I asked you to come to the shake shop with Gloria and me, but I guess it wouldn't be any fun for you in your condition. Uh, bye. <laughs> I'm leaving now. Ted is downstairs. Are you sure you don't want to come? What are you doing? Can you spare it? Don't you what? Patch, are you sure you're all right? I'm not so sure this bet was a good idea. You have two more days to go. I hate to leave you alone. Someone's coming? Who? <laughs> Richard? All right. Have a good time. Good night. <laughs> Good evening, Penny. I thought we'd continue our chat of this afternoon. Yes, sir, I said to myself, Rich, why don't you drop in on poor old Patty and give her a few minutes of your precious time? <laughs> sure I can. How did you know I was going to say that? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. What are you, some kind of a mind reader? <laughs> I don't happen to think this is funny. <laughs> Boy, will I be glad when you get your voice back so I can tell you what I think of you. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a wise guy. <laughs> Boy, talk about thunderclouds. What was he so mad about? Here she comes, the girl with a golden voice. Did you bring any of those crazy cards with you? Good. After class, I'll take you over to the shake shop. I've been thinking up some things I want to tell you. All right, class. I'm going to hand back the essays that you turned in yesterday. And on the whole, I'm very proud of you. You did an excellent job. There was one essay in particular I think was especially good, and that was written by Patty Lane. Patty, will you come up here and read your essay to the class? <laughs> oh, do you have a sore throat? Well, can you talk? Well, come up here and read your essay. <laughs> you mean you can talk, you just refuse to? times? Very well, then. You may. You may do it over again. Stubborn has two Bs. <laughs> oh, there you are. We thought you weren't coming. How long can it take to write, I won't be stubborn a hundred times? What's the matter? Can't you talk? No, but she's very big with signs. Did you bring any? Good. I was just talking to Gloria about taking her to the basketball game tonight. Oh, I know I promised you, but that was before you had your problem. 
I mean, what's the point of going to a basketball game if you can't yell? What are you going to do when they shoot a crucial basket? Just sit there? We'll let you know how the game turns out. Uh, why don't we go over to the shake shop, huh? Patty can't stand not having the last word. No? Look. Hello, darling. Hello, Nat. Guess who had to write, I will not be stubborn 100 times today? You? No, I'll give you a clue. It's a sister of mine. Oh, I'm surprised. Patty's not stubborn. It was all a misunderstanding. Miss Blake asked Patty to read her essay to the class, and Patty refused. Why? Because of her bet with you. That silly thing? Oh, Patty doesn't think it's silly. She's taking it very seriously. Well, it's all well and good, but I never intended it to interfere with her schoolwork. I better have a little talk with her. If you do, it's going to be very one-sided. She's really stuck to this, hasn't she? Two whole days. <laughs> of course, it's a little like damming up Niagara Falls. When you open the floodgates, run for your life. She probably won't stop talking for a month. But you know, I bet there isn't another teenager in the country who could go three days without talking. Maybe you should bottle this. Then you make a fortune. I think some of the other children are getting in digs at Patty. And another thing, Richard is taking Gloria to the basketball game tonight. Say, Matt, why don't I just call this whole thing off? I didn't realize it was going to be so rough on her. I could just tell Patty that I'm convinced she can do this for another day. And I've decided to throw in the sponge and pay her. I've already tried it. What do you mean? I told her that you were convinced that she could do it for another day and you had decided to throw in the sponge and pay her. <laughs> what did she say? Said no. Well, she didn't exactly say no. She shook her head no. But why? I mean, she's just out to get the money. Oh, that's what I thought. And we were both wrong. It's the principle of the thing. She is determined to stick it out, Martin. Yeah, well, maybe if I had a little talk Won't with her... Won't do any good. Her mind is made up. Miss Blake was right. She is stubborn. I know. Knock. Are you busy? Good. And there's a couple of things I want to say to you. I know you can't answer back, and I may never get this opportunity again. So, uh, I just want to tell you that... that I think you're the greatest sister in the whole world. I tease you a lot, but... I wouldn't trade you in for... for a new handset. With batteries. Well, that's all I have to say. I'll start yelling at you when you can yell back. Come on, I cut it out. The thing I can't stand, it's a sentimental thing. Oh, come on in, Richard. Hi, Mrs. Lane. Why didn't you use the front door? Technical difficulties. What? Patty doesn't want to talk to me. Oh, she doesn't want to talk to anyone. I know, but, I mean, she doesn't want to see me. Well, I can't blame her. I played a joke on her with Gloria, and she took it seriously. I see. I thought maybe you could give me some ideas. Well, I don't know how much it would help, Richard. Patty can be pretty stubborn. Oh, are you telling me? She's got the temper of a wildcat. Why don't you just tell her you're sorry? I tried, but she won't listen. I even got Kathy to talk to her, but it's like trying to talk to a stone wall. You see, the thing is, Mrs. Lane, I have something very important to tell her. There's a kind of plot going on, and I think Patty should know about it. Well, that does sound serious, doesn't it? The trick is to get her to listen to me. Richard, I have an idea. Yeah? There's one form of communication that Patty has never been able to resist. Why don't you go home and call her on the telephone? Mrs. Lane, you're a genius! <laughs> Are you there? Can you hear me? I have to talk to you. Ow! <laughs> if you can hear me, rap twice. If you can't, rap once.
You don't have to yell. <laughs> it's very important, Patty. What do you say? Ah, oh, come on. Can't you take a joke? You don't think Gloria means anything to me, do you? Well, you're wrong. That's why I have to see you. I'll come over in a half hour, okay? Thanks a lot, Patty. I'll see you. I hate to bother you, Patty, but this is important. joking. Uh, I told you I'm sorry. I admit I was wrong. I'm crazy about you. Patty, are you all right? Uh, kiss me once for no and, and twice for yes. Oh, that's better. Uh, can you talk now? Oh, well, well, when will you be able to talk? I'm not asking for me. I'm asking because I think you're in trouble. You, you know, Gloria tried out for the debating team, too. And she was pretty sore when they picked you and not her. They picked her as an alternate. Well, I just found out. At the meeting tomorrow, she's going to ask them to remove you from the team so she can take your place. It's a pretty dirty trick. It's kind of clever when you think about it. Oh, I called you as soon as I heard. Boy, holding a telephone conversation with you is pretty hard on the eardrums. Well, what are you going to do? can't do that. <laughs> Patty, what time is this bed up tomorrow? Four o'clock. You know what time the meeting is? 3.30. <laughs> that is the meanest trick I've ever heard of. There must be something you can do, Patty. You go into that meeting tomorrow, and you say. All right, then write it. No, I suppose you're right. If Gloria's out to get you and you can't talk, you don't stand much of a chance. Patty, why don't you forget about the bet? Actually, it's only a half hour's difference. Your father wouldn't mind. Isn't it important to you to be on the debating team? You're not going to let Gloria get away with this. Have any idea what's going on around here? You mean all the plotting and counterplotting? Oh, yes, Richard briefed me. Well, it's like something out of James Bond. I mean, I'm the last man in the world to meddle in the affairs of young America, but Gloria's plan to get Patty off the debating team is diabolical. I know. There's only one other person I know who could have thought of a scheme like that. Who's that? Patty. <laughs> well, it just isn't fair. I mean, Patty earned her place on that team. Now she's going to lose it because of a silly bet. Oh, perhaps she won't lose it. Well, Gloria's got that meeting scheduled for 30 minutes before Patty can talk. Patty can always cancel the bet. Oh, she won't. I just tried that again. What'd she say? She didn't say anything. Just held up a sign that read, Forget it, Papa. I'm a born loser. When I went up to see her, she held up a sign that said, If silence is golden, I'm going to be a very rich kid. At least she's got a sense of humor about it. Well, I'm afraid I haven't. It's all right for Patty to joke, but I know how much being on that debating team means to her. She's wanted it all year. There must be something we can do. What? Well, for one thing, I could go to that meeting tomorrow and... And? Make a fool of myself. <laughs> Want to hear a confession? Yeah. I thought about going to her school and setting the clock back. It's terrible. Wish I'd thought of it. You know what the real trouble is? We're trying to solve Patty's problems for her. It's up to her to solve it for herself. Yeah, but that's just the point. She won't. She's given up. It's not like Patty. She's going to let Gloria win this without putting up a fight. 
Trouble is, we're not used to Patty losing. Well, you can't win them all. Oh, I suppose not. How does she get herself into these things? She got into this one with a little help from you. Next time, I'll learn to keep my big mouth shut. Want to bet? <laughs> We get started. It's not 3.30. You're not even supposed to be here. You're not on the debating team. I'm an amicus curiae. Yeah. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Why <laughs> <laughs> don't we wait for Patty? She's our captain. Do you want a captain who can't even talk? We're having our first debate with Rockland High on Monday. Well, you want to win, don't you? Come on, let's get to work. Why don't you adjourn until 4 o'clock? Because. The meeting was called for 3.30. Look, if Patty's not interested enough to be here, she's not interested enough to be captain of the Brooklyn Heights High debating team. I tell you, she'll be here at 4 o'clock. Call the meeting to order. Goodbye, Richard. You wouldn't do this to Patty, would you? Gloria's right. If Patty was interested, she'd be here. Why don't I send out for sandwiches? Well, let's get the show on the road. Yeah. The meeting of the Brooklyn Heights High debating team is hereby called to order. I move that since Miss Patty Lane is absent from this meeting, she be removed from the debating team. Is there a second to the motion? I second it. A motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. All in favor of what? What's up, group? Patty, you changed your mind. Yeah, I thought we were going to lose you. Did you? Oh, you can't get rid of me that easily, can you, Gloria, darling? Apparently not, darling. Uh, hold everything. We have a motion before the House. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. 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 The motion is not passed. Now, let's get down to business. I think that's a great idea. And, uh, Gloria, since you're just an old connect, why don't you, uh, buzz off and get ready for Halloween? <laughs> anyway, you lost your bet. I'll talk to you later. Anytime. You'll find me at Patty's. Well, uh, we have a lot of work to do. Group. I'm ready. Uh, in that case, uh, why don't we take a half hour and relax and we'll all meet back here at 4 o'clock. What's the point, as long as we're here? As long as we're here and I'm captain, I say we should meet back here at 4 o'clock. Boy, I didn't think you were going to get here on time. Neither did I. You decided this was more important than the bet, huh? Yeah. Well, who wants to win a silly old bet? Well, that's funny. I thought it meant something to you. Me? Nah. I guess you're glad I got rid of Gloria. Uh, once for no and, and twice for yes. <laughs> once for no and... No! What's the matter, Kathy? It's the least you can do for Pat. <laughs> Hello, Nat. Hello, darling. Well, tonight's the big night. Patty talks. Martin, you're going I'll to be bet sorry. I was right about Niagara Falls, wasn't I? Well, as if a... I'm not mistaken, she started bending your ear at four o'clock on the dot, and she hasn't stopped talking since. She is at home, isn't oh, she? Oh yes, darling, she is at home. There she is, the chatterbox of Brooklyn Heights. Honey, I'm really proud of you. You did it. Are you glad it's over? <laughs> Did you have a good day? Oh, I owe you some money, don't I? You can talk now, you know. You won the bet. <laughs> Laryngitis. I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> Here.
Here's Kathy, who's lit most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins. Hi there, they good cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they walk alike, and talk. 